AJ, we have one more movie this week. One I'm more. I'm scared. I don't know what it is, and that's purely because of what I heard today, just very randomly on YouTube. I had this thing that said songs that turned thirty years old this year. Is it an animation? Nope. Okay, so I'm wrong. What did you think it was? I'm interested. Lion King. Not yet. It's coming. Is this year? It's this year. (laughs) Based on that Elton John song that came out, I was like, oh, sugar, that's coming. (laughs) This is a big year for the 30 year olds. AJ, we're not going back 10. We're not going back 20. Another 30. We're not going back 30. Lord Father. No, I got you. 40. We're not going back 40. Oh, I've got a feeling of something. Is this kind of fitting with someone that we've recently lost? Nope. Okay, it's not Rocky then. It's not oh, Rocky. Oh, Carl Weathers, yeah. No, it's not Rocky. AJ, we're not going back 50. Stop it. We are going back for the first time ever on the Silver Screen Dude YouTube channel, 60 years for a movie that one of us, at least, is an all-time favourite. One of the finest acting performances ever, AJ, I think you'll agree. The iconic, the brilliant, an idea of how to stop caring and learn to love the bomb. AJ, Dr. (laughs) Strangelove is 60 years old. One of my top five films of all time is now 60 years old. Now, this is a strange one because, you know, the psychology of numbers is a very weird one, isn't it? When you're kind of like 10 years old, 20 years old, even 30, it's like, oh, that really stings. When it goes beyond your lifetime and you're aware that the movie was beyond your lifetime, it obviously hurts less because you were not there when the movie came out. So this is as classic as it gets because this this predates our our inception into the wider world but like well, it lands on my dad's time like yeah this I mean, is it this what? is this is this is an early on your dad's time yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah your dad ain't that old bro yeah. um same here like 60 years old since the world was introduced to peter sellers playing not one not two but three roles in dr strange love playing the president and he's just incredible is it Daniel Day-Lewis in There Will Be Blood? No. I maintain that's the greatest acting performance ever. But if you wanted to throw this in the mix with that, with Heath Ledger as the Joker, you know, this this is, Peter Sellers in this is in that kind of territory. The OG, well, not the OG, because you had Chaplin and all them lot, but a brilliant physical comedian, and above everything, a chameleon actor. Like, Sellers just disappears into these roles and it's a cautionary tale more relevant now with the impending return of the orange chimpanzee um agent orange agent orange it's it's even more cautionary now than it maybe was in the 60s at the height of the cold war a cautionary tale about what happens with spying and countries not getting along and coalitions and plotting and the threat of nuclear up Apocalypse. Oh, it's good. Um, what um, the what the, the thing that you said is the comedian. <laughs> You're in shock. No, no, sorry, I wasn't sure if it was going for the trailer, but sixty years also threw me off. Um, it's what you say about chameleon because we can talk, and I like I I when you say OG, I thought you were going to say OG chameleon. I'm not sure if there are before. This is the oldest chameleon actor I've seen. Um, mm. We could talk Eddie Murphy doing Nutty Professor and Coming to America, Martin Lawrence doing Big Mama's That's House. That's prosthetics, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, makeup be makeup. You're always going to get what you can out of it. Even Robin Williams doing Robin Williams and uh, The Dad and Mrs. Doubtfire, which is a brilliant musical, by the way. Fantastic musical. Certain parts are missing, but really great musical. That's what it would say. Um, there, there's a lot to be redeemed. Um, you know, from all of these actors, even all the stuff Jim has done. But what Sellers does here 
as multiple characters and the fact that you may not even recognize him playing one character to another pure gold absolute pure gold um yeah um it's it's weird because like Again, you, when you're a kid and you see these black and white movies on, you think it's 80 to 100 years old anyway. That's just the way right. these were. It was either colour or black and white. And if it was black and white... Because the thing is, you had colour, which was our colour. You had your westerns, which were dated colour, or in the Waltons and all of that. And you're like, my God, that has to be prehistoric. Then you got stuff that were black and white. It, it was literally, you know, Jesus watched it when he was going to school kind of thing. That's what you kind of <laughs> it, 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 it just literally felt that way. Um, even the Flintstones was in colour. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It just felt that way. I do, I do. But, a child's perception of the yeah, age of movie. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. But the you go back and you start to pay stuff and you start to appreciate cinema. You know, like another thing that I haven't got the date for and it will possibly come and hopefully come one day is something like 12 Angry Men. You sit back and you see it as such a great film. Seven Samurai. There are films that predate you that you will sit back and appreciate. I would like to think that as much as we are saying a film that is, for me, just under... How about this is 60? So just under 20 years old for me. Literally just under 20 years old. We're talking about 19 years, give or take, right? When you look at that, I would like to feel that the generation now can look at, say, Ace Ventura say uh passion of the christ and the films that were in that era and appreciate it without it being like oh that old crap so it's weird you, to you hope so don't you you hope so listen yeah yeah what what and this is something that you and me have been discussing for so long now what truly defines a cinephile versus just a movie fan you know someone who will put on a movie and then try and make out with his you know partner on the sofa or something or someone who will go to the cinema three or four times a year because there's a blockbuster or there's an actor they really like these are fine there's nothing wrong with consuming movies that way but where you're going to cross over and become a cinephile is when you actively start looking for movies like Doctor Strange Love, like Passion of the Christ, even like Ace Ventura, on the sole basis that you want to see as many movies as possible to have as an informed opinion on movies as possible, because having an informed opinion on movies is something that you value personally. Ergo, you're a cinephile. Can I say, though, there was one category I don't appreciate. It is Westerns. The no, no, the, 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 the Netflix and chill person. Because I have to be honest, there was one thing that does really grind my gears. And I'm not saying, hey, if you're going to get laid, you're going to get laid. I'm not opposed to that. It's those people <laughs> who don't focus on a film that means a lot to you. You know oh. that one? Thing that I, would, you, you, I hate it. You know, if someone needs to get up, if they say and then pause it. you literally it, end up good. watching them the whole movie. Like, did you watch that? Yeah. Like, if you say pause it, we're good. It's when they go, oh, I'm just going to go to the kitchen. Don't worry. I'm just going to go to the toilet. Don't. <sighs> so, and no, that's a really important scene. Of... And you need to watch this. And oh, but it's just a like, movie. I don't think, just if I'm on a film, I don't think I'm capable of Netflix and chilling. I'll, I'll put it up there. It's not really happened because I'm invested in the film. A girl I dated for three weeks once, you can understand, you're going to understand very quickly why it was only three weeks dead to say to me see if you can guess the movie oh lord of the rings nope i'm Trying just to gonna go me. i'm just gonna go to the bathroom it's just the stuff with the mouse again the, with the with the mouse the mouse the green mile oh <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah. just <laughs> the mouse <laughs> Out. Get out now, now, now. I don't care about you. Shoot out. I don't care how hot you are. Get up. Get up. Just the Ooh, mouse. She done messed up. Mm -mm. Just oh, the wow. mouse. Anyway, shall we watch yeah. some of let's this? Have, uh, shall we watch? Uh, shall we watch this classic sixty-year-old trailer? Let's check this bad boy out. I don't think I've actually ever watched this trailer. Jesus, it's a cool trailer. I would say maybe a bit too late. Oh, there's a bit flashy in it. 
I don't know if this causes epilepsy. Bass. Ten females to each male. The Coca-Cola machine. Fluids. The Doomsday Machine. Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, should I get it? On the hotline. Doctor Strange Love. Or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. A moving <laughs> picture. I shouldn't tell you this, man, Drake, but you're a good officer and you have a right to know. It looks like we're in a shooting war. Oh, uh, hell. <laughs> All the Russians are Bob's. Well, boys, I reckon this is it. Nuclear combat toe-to-toe with the Ruskies. I don't like the look of this, Fred. All right, tell you what you better do, old buddy. <laughs> I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. And although I uh, hate to judge before all the facts are in, it's beginning to look like uh, General Ripper exceeded his authority. I, I first became aware of it, Mandrake, during the physical act of love. Huh. <laughs> Missile still deflecting. Look how poor it is! Amazing. Has that plane really got a chance of getting through? Well, uh, sir, uh, if the pilot's good, see, I mean, I mean, if he's really sharp, <laughs> he can barrel that baby in solo. I mean, you ought to see it sometime. It's a sight, you a big plane like a 52. Room. It's jet exhaust, flying chickens in the barn. Yeah. Doctor Strange Love. Or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. A moving <laughs> picture. <laughs> love it. What a great a trailer. trailer. I've, I've actually never trailer. seen that trailer. What a great, great trailer. Um, I, even in that trailer, though, there's so many great moments. Like a full shootout underneath the sign that says "Peace is <laughs> the black comedy aspect of it. And every man will have ten females to his name. It's, it's if, so if warped episode, and twisted. It's if so this was a full episode, we are going to seem a bit anti. If you know what I'm saying, not only are we celebrating Mel Gibson, we've got the good old doctor. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, I can't believe me. they put that in the trailer, too. You know, it's like, wow. Oh, but then you could have easily got away with it. Then, I yeah, facts, it. facts. Listen, it's, it's, I think it's Stanley Kubrick's finest achievement, and I'm a big Stanley Kubrick fan. I don't think he's ever done better than this. It's one of my top five movies of all time. The performances are just incredible. The tone they go for with the, you know, the the deadpan black comedy. Like, if you're on Instagram and you're watching that Shabazz Says guy, well, you know what? You're a povo and all that, you know? Very funny, man. I'm, and I'm very happy Shabazz has found all the success in the world. But that deadpan comedy? Yeah, Dr. Strangelove called They Asked for Their Thing Back. All the deadpan stuff, It th this is it. Sellers and Scott and Sterling Hayden doing their thing and... It's just incredible. And obviously, it's the top five movie of all time for me. So, moo, goat status instantly. AJ? I'm going to be a bit more harsh. Not majorly harsh. Um, 
I'm not surprised it's Kubrick. Uh, me and him have got a relationship to, to work on. No. But what I will say is if it, it's a weird film, because did I enjoy it? Yes. But it's a comedy that you have to focus on or you will miss the jokes. That's the funny thing about it. If you don't Big focus, time. it was a one-time watch for me. I think on the second time, I might appreciate it a lot more because I know the story. One, you've got to follow the story and the message that's in the story. And then you start to see stuff that are very similar. There's a very classic quotable line that I'm not going to quote, but it's very similar to what the trailer showed of peace is our, our, our business. And then you see a war taking place there. There's one very, very similar to that. I'm not going to quote it. Uh, hopefully you'll catch the joke when it's there, but you shouldn't be fighting in certain rooms. It, anyway, that's enough of it. <laughs> you just good, take yes. it that way. So for me, it's a two thumbs up, but you've got to have your head switched on or you will miss a lot of the jokes that's why i kind of have it on a for like for the greatness of the comedy you might just be expecting a barrel of laughs but as you said it's a deadpan comedy that you've got to put your brain into it. it's not that it's not a thinking man's comedy but you've got to focus or you a lot of them will just whoosh, over your head so that's why it's a two thumbs up as opposed to like greatest of all time for me 